this. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Really easy to make. I mean, I just made it out of junk material that I had sitting around. Got some cold rolled, got some aluminum, got some hot rolled. It's all basic junk, so that's why I didn't do like a, a build video per se. And plus, this is pretty specific to what I want to do. I'm making gears that have uh, a 5 8 bore on them. You could up this uh, the scale of this thing to really what you, whatever you wanted, or you could have a larger diameter shaft and perhaps turn a uh, thread so you could put a a uh, like a three jaw or a four jaw chuck on there if you really wanted to do that the the biggest thing for me with doing all this you know I'm just a home gamer is the challenge of trying to work with what you got and yeah I mean, is this thing going to be like ultra precision? No, it's not going to be ultra precision. It's it's a home gamer thing. I got this piece of quarter inch, way too long, you know, didn't feel like cutting it down. And that's fed through this piece of scrap aluminum. I mean, I don't even know what this corner is here. It's just, you know, it was from an old project that never came to to be and this is what we're working with you know it's all stuff out of my junk bin i pressed in a little bushing uh because i had it you know just to because i know that aluminum is going to wear out and it's going to create slop in there so that goes in like such this is nothing more than think of this as an l shape that's all you really need if you wanted to have a a detent all right so there's that pretty basic with all the horrible milling that you could ever lay your eyes upon there for you good old youtuber so there's that this back here to hold the gear onto the shaft um, I thought of originally just having a washer just press, press against there, but it still had the opportunity for the gear to spin. Plus I had to deal with the uh, pin that's on the set of gears that I have. So that little pin we had to, to deal with. So let me go ahead and take that off. I drilled a couple holes and then I took this uh socket cap screw or whatever they're called i forget what they're called right now uh, put that in there and i had to you can see i had to grind that down because these holes you know i didn't perfectly align it i mean we're this is like late night slapping this thing together so that just helps uh hold that in there you really don't need it you could just drill a single hole and then a center hole Okay, and that will positively engage that that guy. These are my change gears from my lathe. So I'll set that off to the side. Got a washer. Again, a scrap cut off of some sort. Uh, I cleaned it up a little bit. And that just goes on the end there. That gives me a little bit of space off the back. Uh, then our shaft comes out. And I've got bushings in here, really not necessary. If you were just slapping this together and just like a single time use, yeah, I know steel on steel, it's gonna eventually wear out, but I had the bushing, so I put it in there. They're not press fit because I don't own the right size reamer for 5 8 so I had to use a drill bit, or at least I just used the drill bit. I know I could have bored it out on the lathe, but uh, I just drilled it out and stuck that in there. Uh, the other one, so there's that. This is probably the most complicated piece, the this bar to tighten, to clamp it down. Um, why aluminum? Because that's what I had on hand. Uh, no reason for any material choices other than the body being made of steel. It's a simple. This curvature is cut out only because I didn't have a long enough screw, essentially. 
to, to tie in there. I wanted to use all these cap screws, so hey, that's what I used. Uh, I just cut that on a porta band. This hole, the orientation of this hole does not matter at all. It's just simply to secure it in place. The most critical part of the entire thing is drilling this, this, and this so that they all perfectly align. Set this up and bore it out on your lathe. I was too lazy and didn't feel like doing that, so I just sandwiched all the parts together. I sandwiched these three pieces together, and I drilled them on a drill press. And then this is nothing. I'm not going to disassemble that. I mean, do you really need me to disassemble that to show you two plates that have the holes in them? Okay. You can see that I turned the bottom of that hot roll. I turned that up on the lathe. Um, just threw it in the lathe. Got it flat. I milled these two pieces flat just so that it would lay on the table and sit not rock at all. This is a piece of 5 8 cold rolled. I think it's cold rolled. It might be hot rolled. I don't, I don't even know. Two collars. Notice that the collars are not touching one another. This one keeps the movement from front to back. It helps lock the spindle in place. The second collar is so that all of this can sandwich together. If you were to just try to sandwich on this guy, there's a likelihood that this will move and it will lock the spindle. The spindle won't be able to turn. At least that's what I encountered. So that's why it's, it's set up like that. Junk washers, you know, basic hardware. A sleeve that I dropped. Pretty, pretty simple. This is your um, gear blank. Okay, gear blank. Another sleeve. All right, I should just throw it all away, right? It's a piece of junk already. I can hear it now. I had to shim it up with two sheets of paper. So that's about eight thou of run out uh, in terms of going across the, the top here. So not great, but hey, piece of trash here. We're talking scrap material. You could get something from the, all the little drops and all the little pieces of junk. That That's why I make this stuff, you know, see what you can make with, with almost nothing. Really, let's take a look here across. I'm happy with that. I mean, we got zero movement on the needle. Other than just a little bit of indiscrepancy because I've never cleaned this shaft up. I mean, this is, I didn't even sand it. Over that distance, uh, whatever that is, I think that's an inch and a half, two inches, uh, we get about, I'd say, half a thou, maybe half a thou, maybe. The needle just, just wiggles. Remember, I'm only cutting a quarter inch, so that's, you know, tenths on the order. I'm good with it. I hope you're good with it. Cause that's what I'm gonna do.
perfect. That should be a 45 tooth gear. When you don't possess the particular number of uh, tooth count that you want to cut, well, you just resort to a piece of wood with a printout. Uh, in this case, I needed an 80 tooth. I don't have an 80 tooth for my lathe in terms of my change gear, so this is just divided up. It's just a circle divided up into 80 equal parts. And I put a clamp up here and one of my little squares, and I basically would line up a mark with the front edge of my uh, little square here. And I successfully cut myself nice 80 tooth gear. Of course, it's got to be cleaned up. It's got a little bit of burrs all over it. But, yeah. In the spirit of scrap. <laughs>